Hello, friends, and welcome to Sleep Tight Stories. I'd like to say hello to some friends. Hello to Hazel Bradley. Hello to Paige Purdom from Hamilton, New Zealand. Hello to Ruby Grace in Graysonville, Maryland. And hello to Stella from the UK. I'd like to say happy birthday to Scarlet Dolly Petal from Harlow, Essex in the United Kingdom, who is turning eight on January the 31st. Happy birthday, Scarlet. I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you, Hazel, Paige, Ruby, Stella, and Scarlet for your support. It is so nice meeting all of you. In this chapter, our stuffed elephant is in the attic with some other toys. He is thinking about taking a ride on the spinning wheel when all of a sudden he hears, Make way, here I come. What could be making that noise, he wonders. The stuffed elephant finds out it is a rat, and he has lots of fun watching the other toys ride on the merry-go-round. After a while, he gets taken downstairs and given to Archie. Is Archie going to be happy? The Stuffed Elephant, Chapter 4 Since there were no real people up in the attic, no boys or girls or grown-ups to spy around, the toys and the other things in the dusty top of the house could do as they pleased. The toys could pretend to come to life, and even such a thing as a spinning wheel could whirl about and speak. So when the spinning wheel had invited whoever wished to get on and have a merry-go-round ride, and the harsh voice had called, Make way, here I come! The stuffed elephant hardly knew what was going to happen. Then, all at once, a big brown rat, a real live rat and not a toy, ran from a hole in the corner and with a squeal of delight, jumped up on the twirling spinning wheel. Here I go on the merry-go-round. I ride this way every night, squeaked the rat to the elephant and the other toys, which Mr. Dunn had hidden in the attic until it was time to give them out. Do you indeed? asked the elephant. You must have lots of fun. I do, answered the brown rat, but who are you? And he stood up among the spokes of the spinning wheel and looked over toward the moonlight patch on the floor where the new toy stood. I am a stuffed elephant, was the answer, and I have just had the most dreadful adventure. I was pitched out of the car into a snowbank. Oh, I don't like the snow, squeaked the rat. It's too cold. But I am glad to see you, Mr. Elephant. Don't you want to ride on this merry-go-round? Thank you. I'm afraid I'm too big, answered the elephant. And I never before saw a merry-go-round that spun this way like a wheel. In Mr. Mug's store where I came from, there was a toy merry-go-round, but it spun like a top. I'm not a regular merry-go-round, said the spinning wheel. I just pretend I'm one up here in the attic. Time was when I used to spin yarn for the grandmother of Mr. Dunn. But now all yarn is spun in factories by machinery, and spinning wheels are out of fashion. So I am up here in the dust, and it makes the time pass more quickly to pretend I am a merry-go-round. 
Yes, and we rats and mice have a good time, cried the brown chap as he wound his tail among the spokes of the wheel to hold on tightly as he spun around and around. I believe I'd like a ride, too, said a tin soldier, which was another toy Mr. Dunn had brought home. All right, climb up, called out the rat. So the tin soldier got up on the spinning wheel and rode with the rat. The elephant wanted to have this fun, but he was too large to get on the wheel. Besides, he said, something might happen to my trunk. He was very proud of his trunk and his tusks, was the stuffed elephant. Several days passed, during which the toys had to remain hidden in the attic, waiting. They did not mind it, however, as they were left to themselves and could have fun. At last, however, the day came, and the stuffed elephant and the other toys were carried down to the living room and placed by the sofa. When morning came, Archie Dunn came racing downstairs in his little pajamas, crying, Morning! Morning! Do you think there might be any presents for me? Go and look, replied his mother. When Archie saw all his toys, but especially the stuffed elephant, the little boy shouted and clapped his hands for joy and cried, Oh, what a lovely day! Oh! I have always wanted a stuffed elephant, and now I have it. Oh, what a fine big elephant you are. He threw his arms around the stuffed creature's neck and hugged him so hard that the cotton stuffing almost oozed out of the elephant's ears. I hope he doesn't squeeze me any harder, thought the elephant, though he dared not so much as give a trumpet sound. And as for saying anything or waving his trunk, that was not to be thought of. For Archie was there, and his sister Elsie, and Mr. and Mrs. Dunn. A room full of people. And of course, the elephant had to remain quiet. Look at my new dolly, called Elsie to Archie. And it is a good thing the little boy had something else to look at or he might have kept on squeezing the elephant until he was out of shape. Yes, your dolly is nice, but I like my elephant better, said Archie. Elephants are for boys and dollies are for girls, aren't they, Daddy? asked Elsie. I guess that's right if you think so, replied Mr. Dunn. But get dressed now, children, and have breakfast. Then you may play with your toys. Don't forget... Later, your friends will be coming over. Archie and Elsie were so excited that they did not want to stop to dress or even eat. But they managed to get some clothes on, eat a little, and then they started again to play with the many gifts they had received. About 10 o'clock, Elsie... Looking out of the window across the snow-covered yard, gave a squeal of delight and cried, Oh, here comes Mirabelle, and she has her lamb on wheels. Oh, now we can have fun, and I can show her my new doll. Is anybody else coming? asked Archie. I want to show somebody my stuffed elephant. Elsie looked again before running to the door to welcome her friend. Yes, went on Archie's sister. I see Joe, and he has his nodding donkey. That's good, laughed Archie. Into the house came Mirabelle, who carried a lamb on wheels. Look at my dolly, Elsie said. Let's go play. Hi, Archie. I got a steam engine, only I couldn't bring it over, said Joe, who had hurt his leg before but was feeling better now. So I just brought my old nodding donkey, he added. He was in the hospital once, like I was, and Mr. Mug mended his broken leg. 
At the mention of the name Mr. Mug, the stuffed elephant began to listen more carefully. If he had dared, he would have flapped his big ears, but that was not allowed. I wonder, thought the elephant, if he means the same Mr. Mug of the toy store where I came from. I wish the children would go out of the room for a minute so I could speak to the nodding donkey and the lamb on wheels. But the children were having too much fun to leave the room. Mirabelle with her lamb and Joe with his donkey looked at the presents that Elsie and Archie had gotten. Then there came a ring at the doorbell, and in came a boy named Sidney with a calico clown and a girl named Dorothy with a sawdust doll. The stuffed elephant was getting excited. He had heard these other toys spoken of by his friends in Mr. Mug's store and wanted to talk to them. But while the children were in the room, he dared not say a word. At last, however, Mrs. Dunn invited the little callers out to the dining room to have some milk and cake, and out they rushed, leaving the toys in the middle of the floor. Ah, at last we are alone, said the elephant. Please tell me, Mr. Nodding Donkey, he said, were you ever in Mr. Mug's store? I came from there, was the answer. So did I, joyfully exclaimed the elephant. I don't remember seeing you there, the nodding donkey said, swaying his head up and down. I was one of the very newest toys, went on the elephant. I suppose you were there last year or the year before? Yes, said the donkey. It was some time ago, and I have had many adventures. Tell me. Did you ever have a broken leg? Mercy, no, exclaimed the elephant. Well, I did, and Mr. Mug mended it for me, went on the donkey proudly. This sawdust doll here, he went on, has also had many adventures. Tell him about them, sawdust doll. Oh, it would take too long, replied Dorothy's plaything. Let's have some fun now that the children are out of the room. All right, agreed the elephant. This is like it used to be in Mr. Mug's store after closing time. What shall we do? I know what I should like to do, said the calico clown, as he looked at the big stuffed toy. What? asked the nodding donkey. I should like to go for a ride on the elephant's back went the clown. All my life I have wanted a ride on an elephant's back, and I have never yet had the chance. You shall have it now, replied the kind elephant. I'll come over and get you. Can you climb up? I'm pretty tall, you see. I'll stand on top of this toy trolley car, said the clown. One of Archie's presents was a toy trolley car. And by jumping up on this, the clown managed to reach the elephant's back. Now hold on tightly and you won't fall, said the elephant. Oh, if I had thought, I could have lifted you up in my trunk as I did the rolling mouse. But I'll lift you down again. Sit tight now. So the clown sat tight and the elephant walked around the room with him giving the fine fellow a grand ride. The sawdust doll was just making up her mind that she would be brave enough to get on the elephant's back when, all at once, the nodding donkey cried, Quick, quiet everyone, the children are coming back. Oh, let me get off your back, whispered the clown to the elephant. They must never see me up here, it isn't allowed. But he was too late. Before he could slide off the stuffed elephant, Archie, Elsie, and the other children 
came running into the room. (gasps) They cried as they saw the calico clown on the back of the stuffed elephant. And that is the end of this chapter. What do you think the children are going to do now? Good night. Sleep tight.